Hello and welcome to another one of Mr. Deeping Science Lessons. In today's session you're going to need a book and a pen and in your books I'd like to get down to today's title which is Anaerobic Respiration. For your Star Trek activity I would like to look at these two athletes and describe the difference between a marathon runner and a sprinter. I'd also like to think about how this might relate to anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. Have you described some of the differences? Our marathon runner is going to be running a long distance and our sprinter is going to be running a short distance. Our marathon runners run at a slower pace than our sprinters and what's really important here is that our sprinter is going to be using a lot more energy in 10 seconds of their running than our marathon runner is going to be using in 10 seconds of their running. Because of this, it is difficult for our sprinter to maintain aerobic respiration because they will be unable to deliver oxygen to the tissues quick enough. And our marathon runner, because the rate at which they are using their energy is less, means that they can keep a constant supply of oxygen to the tissues so that they can stay in a state of aerobic respiration. So what happens when there isn't enough oxygen to carry out aerobic respiration? You start to carry out another form of respiration in order to release energy. And this is our anaerobic respiration. It is the respiration, the breakdown of glucose in the absence of oxygen. Our marathon runner with their steady pace make sure they've got a constant supply of oxygen for aerobic respiration, whereas our sprinter uses all the oxygen available to them in a short period of time to the point where they have to start breaking down glucose without oxygen. And this anaerobic respiration is far less efficient than this aerobic respiration. And in today's lesson, we're going to explain why less energy is released by anaerobic respiration as opposed to aerobic respiration. We're going to describe what is meant by the oxygen debt and we're going to describe why anaerobic respiration occurs in other organisms other than humans. So let's have a direct comparison between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Our equation for aerobic respiration was glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide and water. Anaerobic respiration is where we have glucose and that is converted into lactic acid. In this reaction, the glucose is not fully broken down. That means it does not release as much energy. And this anaerobic respiration is going to be problematic for people doing exercise over a long period of time. This buildup of lactic acid is going to cause the muscles to ache. And with that in mind, I want you to answer this question. If you exercise very hard for a long period of time, your muscles will begin to ache. I would like you to explain why. And if you want a challenge, I would also like to know why it is important to pace yourself when running a marathon and why would you not want any anaerobic respiration? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your explanation? So the strenuous exercise is going to result in anaerobic respiration. This means that glucose is going to be converted to lactic acid. Let's relate that to why those muscles begin to ache that lactic acid buildup produces the muscle pain. So looking at our challenge question then, why is it important to pace yourself when running a marathon? Well, if you pace yourself, that results in less strenuous exercise. And so the respiration is going to be aerobic. You will always have enough oxygen to react with the glucose so that it is fully broken down. This means that no lactic acid is produced. Instead, your products are carbon dioxide and water, which are removed from the body in the exhalation and in the urine. So we've said this anaerobic respiration is only the partial breakdown of glucose. You have glucose, it breaks down to lactic acid. We can't have this lactic acid remaining in the body. And this buildup of lactic acid produces something called the oxygen debt, in which this lactic acid needs to be reactive with oxygen in order to produce that carbon dioxide and water. So we can define this oxygen debt as the oxygen required to metabolize this lactic acid. This is why when you have done strenuous exercise, it takes a couple of minutes to catch your breath. 
your body is trying to inhale more oxygen to deliver more oxygen to the tissues so it can break down this lactic acid. When that lactic acid has been metabolized, your respiration rate and your depth of breathing decrease. So now we can explain why less energy is released by anaerobic respiration, because that glucose is not fully broken down. And we can describe what is meant by oxygen debt, the oxygen required to metabolize lactic acid. But wait, unlike our aerobic respiration, which is the same in plants and animals, our anaerobic respiration is different in other organisms. In plants, in yeast, they take glucose and instead of producing lactic acid, they produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. And this reaction is very useful to us as humans and we exploit this, but what do we use it for? Well, ethanol is the alcohol that people drink, so we're gonna use it to make wine, we're gonna use it to make beer. We also use that ethanol to burn as a fuel. Now this next task is gonna be tricky, so make sure you've read the question properly. I would like you to copy this table. It's got two columns. The headings are similarities and differences. And I would like you to compare the differences and similarities of anaerobic respiration in humans and yeast. So we're only focusing on anaerobic respiration. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock, and if you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. If you filled out that table, let's have a look at some of these similarities. Both of these types of anaerobic respiration have glucose as a reactant. Both of these processes release energy. Now, let's look at some differences. The yeast is going to produce carbon dioxide and ethanol, whereas animals are going to produce lactic acid. Because animals are producing this lactic acid, it's going to result in the oxygen debt. But wait, there is another similarity here which we haven't spoken about before. In the previous lesson, we said that aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria. Anaerobic respiration does not occur in the mitochondria. Instead, anaerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm. Remember, we said that the cytoplasm is the site of chemical reactions. This is one of those chemical reactions. So now we can describe why anaerobic respiration occurs in other organisms. It is to release energy, because that is the purpose of all respiration, to release energy. We're going to have a go now at a longer answer question. This is a six mark question, and I would like you to compare the difference between anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration for six marks. And for full marks, you need to include animals and plants in your answer. And many of these marks can be got if you use the equations in your answer. And if you really want a challenge, I would also like to suggest why the physique of these two athletes are so different and how might their diets differ. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you made your comparisons? Let's have a look. Starting with the aerobic respiration. It is the same in animals and plants and you take the reactants glucose and oxygen and they react to form carbon dioxide and water. And while doing so, it releases energy. In animals, anaerobic respiration takes glucose as its reactant and produces lactic acid. Both anaerobic and aerobic respiration release energy, but anaerobic respiration releases less. Also, because you are producing lactic acid, the anaerobic respiration is going to result in the oxygen debt. So the next thing we need to include in our answer is, what is this oxygen debt? It is when you take lactic acid and oxygen as your reactants, and they produce carbon dioxide in water. It is the oxygen required to metabolize that lactic acid. But wait, I said for full marks, you also need to include plants and yeast, and their anaerobic respiration is different. They have glucose as a reactant, and they produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. This also releases energy. Did you have a go at this challenge, suggesting why the physique of these athletes is so different and how their diets may differ? If you did, I'd like to hear about it down in the comments below. And so not only have we met all of our learning objectives today, we have also practiced a longer answer question, which means there's only one more thing to complete before we wrap this lesson up, and that is our plenary. 
and I would like you to explain why it takes a couple of minutes to catch your breath after a sprint. And if you really want a challenge, I would also like to know why do aerobic athletes need to consume more carbohydrates in the days before a race? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. If you've got an answer for this, let's start with what type of respiration we are dealing with. Sprinting is an anaerobic exercise. This means it results in the formation of lactic acid. This lactic acid needs to be metabolized and in order to metabolize this lactic acid, you need oxygen. This is our oxygen debt. So let's take all of this information and answer our question. In order to increase the amount of oxygen in the blood, you will have an increased respiration rate. This is why it takes a couple of minutes to catch your breath after a sprint to get more oxygen to metabolize that lactic acid. Did you have a go at the challenge? Why do aerobic athletes need to consume more carbohydrates? This is so that they can get a carbohydrate store in their cells. This carbohydrate can then be broken down into glucose while they are running. They are going to be running for a long period of time it is important that they have an ample supply of glucose as well as oxygen. And that brings us to the end of anaerobic respiration. Next time, we're gonna look at some more uses of anaerobic respiration. But until then, I hope you've had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And I appreciate all the support. I'll see you next time.